Humans have had a major impact on the environment, and as a result, the world is changing. There is undeniable agreement that humans are the cause of many of the current shifts in our climate, as over 97% of scientists agree, but there are still new things that are being discovered all the time about the detailed intricacies of how the environment is reacting. Although we know what the cause is, there still exists much to learn about how exactly a single species can change nature so much. This brings us to the topic of this video. If humans can have such significant effects, in what ways do other animals affect the environment? As we will investigate, there is a fascinating connection between living things and the world around us. As conditions change, organisms change too, and this can lead to some quite unexpected consequences. This video has been made in collaboration with thingswedontknow.com, a science education company that aims to explain the questions that we don't know the answers to yet, encouraging an awareness of current scientific research and helping to identify what areas new discoveries could be made in. With their help, in this video we will be looking at the incredibly important topic of how the world we live in is changed by organisms. One of the best examples that can be used to illustrate the innate connection of living things to each other and the environment is the occurrence of trophic cascades. These take place in nature when a predator affects the population or behaviour of their prey, and in turn this has an effect on the prey of their prey. It's therefore a cascade as the impact of the predator generates changes in the population of a trophic level two spaces beneath them. There is only a cascade if a minimum of three levels are affected, and most commonly this is how they occur. However, it has been known for cascades of more than three levels to happen, even up to five in some rare cases. Trophic cascades can take place in all sorts of environments across the world, and have some, perhaps unexpected, consequences for many different organisms. Often there's even a cyclic effect to the cascades, as the predator that initiated the changes eventually end up becoming affected by them themselves. Since humans are known to kill off top predators of various ecosystems, whether directly or indirectly, there are also concerns over just what kinds of consequences this will have in the communities they are a part of. Let's look at some examples of how different animals play an integral part in their ecosystems, and how reducing their numbers could, and indeed has, caused surprising trophic cascades. First, whales. These wonderful creatures play a very important role in the environment, having far-reaching effects that you may not have expected. It's been argued in the past that whales should be reduced in numbers in order to allow fish populations to recover, which would in turn provide more food for humans. However, the exact opposite actually occurs. With fewer whales, the amount of fish, as well as krill, falls in numbers, demonstrating that whales are an example of what is known as a keystone species. A keystone species is a species that has an incredibly influential effect on the population levels of other species in its environment, and have major roles in the sustainability of their habitats. So how exactly do whales have this kind of effect on their environment? Whales are highly important in maintaining levels of plankton in the ocean, as their faeces, which contains iron and nitrogen, are good fertilisers for the tiny organisms, and the very movements of the whales themselves create currents that transport phytoplankton up nearer the ocean's surface, where greater levels of light allow them to photosynthesise more effectively. So with more whales, there's more fertiliser for plankton, and more photosynthesis occurring, therefore the plankton populations grow. The fish and krill that feed on plankton then have more food, and in turn their populations also grow. So the answer to increasing fish numbers is certainly not to kill off whales, since an increase in whale populations actually benefits fish, an example of a cascade occurring across trophic levels. However, with a transforming climate that is negatively affecting the well-being of various whale species, there's a worrying possibility that losing these animals will accelerate the rate of change. The photosynthesizing phytoplankton remove a great deal of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, therefore helping to control climate change. This means that whales are themselves controlling the change by fertilising and aiding the plankton in their photosynthesis. But as our world continues to alter, it's having consequences on the ocean giants that help to control it. With the spread of ice in the Arctic becoming ever smaller, this drastically changes the habitat in those areas. Arctic species of whales, such as bowheads, belugas and narwhals, will likely be negatively affected by the continued reduction of their habitat, especially as their ice-associated prey becomes less available. In addition, less ice cover opens up the waters for humans to access areas they couldn't before, bringing more boats and fishing vessels that cause both noise noise pollution and shifts in fish populations. This would also increase the risk of oil spills and ship collisions with whales. Another damaging factor on whale populations is the acidifying of the oceans, as more carbon dioxide is put out into the atmosphere by human activity, and consequently is dissolved into the ocean. 
This has the effect of preventing many types of marine invertebrates from properly forming their calcium carbonate shells, and also affects squid, all of these organisms being prey for certain whale species. It's also possible that warmer seas will actually cause a faster spread in diseases, with altered migratory routes causing marine mammal species to mix in ways they hadn't before, and passing on pathogens other species are not immune to. Greater temperatures would additionally put the animals under stress, making them even more at risk to diseases. Then there's also the possible link between breeding success and climate, which adds even more to the various effects that the changing sea temperatures could have on whales. All of these damaging factors mean that as the climate changes, many species of whale face the threat of declining numbers. With fewer whales around and lower biodiversity, there will be fewer phytoplankton photosynthesizing as much as before, which would lead to more CO2 being present in the atmosphere. We can't be absolutely certain at the moment, but it seems that climate change will end up facilitating itself by decreasing the populations of organisms that actually help to control it. One of the most well-known examples of keystone species causing trophic cascades is the eradication and subsequent reintroduction of grey wolves in Yellowstone National Park. The range of these animals used to stretch all across West North America, from Mexico to Alaska, but once the main prey of the wolves were diminished during the late 1800s, they were forced to prey on livestock, which did not go down well with the farmers of the time. In the year 1872, the Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem was established as a national park, and at this point there were between 300 and 400 wolves present in the area. The animals mainly hunted bison and elk, and there were concerns that this predation would be too damaging on their prey's populations. Therefore, an eradication program was initiated. Grey wolves were gone from Yellowstone by 1924, and gone from all lower 48 states by the 1930s. Once these predators had disappeared from Yellowstone, all sorts of trophic cascades occurred, showing grey wolves to have been an integral part in maintaining the conditions of the ecosystem. In the absence of their main predators, the populations of elk increased greatly, and with more elk, this meant more of the animals grazing on plants, causing the plant populations to decrease. This drop in plant abundance meant that various other species, such as certain birds and beavers, were also affected, and even some trees began to have problems reproducing. This led to much habitat loss, and even changed the physical shape of the rivers in the park. Without as much plant life providing stable banks with their roots, the rivers became less straight and shallower, driving off all kinds of wildlife that did not suit the new conditions. Then, the Endangered Species Act of 1973 came into effect, and grey wolves were one of the animals that made it onto this list. As part of efforts to restore their numbers, a small pack of wolves from Canada were relocated to Yellowstone in 1995, an action that led to some truly incredible effects. To begin with, the wolves began to cut down the elk population once more, which allowed some of the plant life to recover. More trees could grow, encouraging greater biodiversity and providing food for other animals that soon returned, such as birds and bears. Since the wolves also caused a reduction in the numbers of other predatory animals such as coyotes, there were now even more smaller animals, for example mice and rabbits, which in turn meant that different and more varied predators returned to the area. These predators included raptors and foxes, further increasing the biodiversity and returning the park closer to its previous conditions. With the return of the wolves and all these trophic cascades going on, the physical landscape even managed to recover. The rivers that had become shallow and more winding now had stronger banks thanks to the richer plant life and their stabilising roots. Many aquatic species such as various fish, otters and ducks therefore came back too. These remarkable consequences of the disappearance and later reintroduction of one species once again illustrates the connectedness of our ecosystems. Although more study is needed in many cases to confirm the detailed effects the wolves had, it's nevertheless clear that these particular animals are crucial to their habitats. A very small number of individuals managed to have such a huge impact on where they lived, even causing changes in the physical shape of the land. There's another group of animals that also have a great deal of important effects on their ecosystems and general biodiversity. The bats. This incredibly abundant and diverse group plays many integral roles in the environments they live in, including the pollination of plants. Certain plants have become specifically adapted to be pollinated by bats, which have become very efficient at this since they can transfer large amounts of pollen as well as travel particularly far distances compared to pollinating insects. Bats are also known to be seed dispersers for various plants that grow fruits important to humans, for example bananas and mangoes, making bats a very economically valuable group of mammals. Not only that, but bats have an important part to play in the removal of many insects that feed on crops. 
By feeding on such animals, this has the effect of reducing the amount of chemical pest control being released into the environment, which can be potentially harmful to the surrounding ecosystem. Since bats also inhabit fairly high trophic levels in the food chain, they are sensitive to changes in the environment, as well as accumulation of harmful toxins. This means that this group of animals are excellent biodiversity indicator species, since they're also fairly easy to sample, identify, and show changes in population numbers when shifts in the ecosystem occur. Because bats are capable of flight, and therefore have large ranges that they move around in, they are also helpful for determining what damage is being done over various different areas, and at what kind of scale. So bats are yet another animal that can have all sorts of effects on their environment, as well as acting as a way for us to get a better idea of the state of their ecosystems. There is still much to uncover about the specific details of how exactly certain organisms change other living beings around them, and in turn their physical environment, but it is clear that they can have significant impacts. The studying of trophic cascades will undoubtedly lead to all sorts of new discoveries in ecology, and hopefully grant us a better idea of what impacts our own species is having by altering the populations of other organisms. I hope this video has been able to show you the incredible connection that different creatures have to each other and the world around them, and that it's certainly not just humans that can have far-reaching influences on the environment. As we mentioned at the beginning, this video has been made with help from Things We Don't Know, a science education company based here in the UK. It is the goal of this organisation to create a place where all the questions that science is still finding answers to can be collected, in order to help increase public awareness of them and to aid researchers in finding topics that are currently being investigated. This place is the website thingswedontknow.com. Here you can find an easily accessible and extensive list of all the scientific mysteries and currently unanswered questions that are being worked on, with links to places that are studying them and references to relevant sites and publications. Things We Don't Know really says it best themselves. There are two distinct aspects to science, learning about what science has discovered, and discovering new things. We feel that scientists tend to concentrate on explaining the things we already know, and rarely explain the things we don't. We are dedicated to explaining the questions to which science still seeks answers. I highly recommend that you go and have a look at their website if you haven't already. I'm sure you'll find something there that will interest you, since learning about the things we don't know and the research being done to discover the answers to them is one of the most exciting parts of science. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.